Hello, amateurs, and welcome to our Rugby World Cup series. And I've got Elko with me again today. Elko, how are you? Hey, TT. Thanks for having me on again. You're very welcome. Now, uh, the fourth round of fixtures is just around the corner, and Elko and I have already chatted through what happened last week. So go and find that video if you haven't listened to it already. Um, but we'll start off with um, which games are standing out for you this weekend, Elko? Which one do you most look forward to seeing? Yeah, well, it, it's somewhat kind of feels like a, a down week for some reason. But then when you start looking into it, then then you start to find find things. Um, New Zealand and Italy, I think, is going to be an interesting one. Um, and I think um, uh, Australia and Portugal is going to be quite interesting as well. Um, if you didn't see our previous uh, rant about Eddie Jones, um, then then have a look at that. But um, yeah, there's, I think all the games should be should be good. Um, but I'm a I'm a mad rugby hern, so um, I'd, I'd I'd watch anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's start with that New Zealand Italy game because. I mean, the big news is three players back for New Zealand. Tyrrell Lomax, the tight head, Shannon Frizzell at, Frizzell at blindside and Geordie Barrett straight into the centre. So New Zealand are now looking much more like their strong, usual selves and massively under the radar at the moment as well. So this game could well be uh, where they sort of pop up and their World Cup really, really starts. And I'm going to back them to do it. I think they're going to have a really strong performance. And although I think Italy are good, I think I think this is going to be where New Zealand take that step towards the quarterfinals and potential, you know, from there on in. Yeah, I mean, look, they're, they're going to be massively favourites. Um, they're, they're coming off a bye week, right? So um, they might get caught cold, um, potentially. Um, Italy uh, had a very good second half um, in their last game. And if they hit the ground running, could could cause them a lot of problems. Um, obviously, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. So presumably, Barra is 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 looking very good at training, and the other two that you mentioned as well. Um, so um, it is an interesting one for them. It's, do they want to put their flag up too high? I don't know. I think they're 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 going along quite nicely. Nobody is talking about them, which is just ridiculous. Um, um, because because we know when it gets to knockout football, they're going to be they're going to be great. Um, having said all that, I love an upset, and I'm going to choose Italy to win by five. Um, <laughs> just because I'd love it to happen, um, and to annoy Kiwis. So there you go. <laughs> it would be amazing. I mean, I'm always for the underdog, to be honest. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'd love that to happen as well. It'd be amazing for the tournament, I think, and amazing for where's, Italian rugby. Where's the Italian coach from? He's, isn't he a Kiwi? Uh, yes. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. His name escapes yeah. me at the moment. My, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. It does matter uh, as well. Um, might be the next Australian coach then. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Um, let's go back to the Wednesday then. So Wednesday night, Uruguay against Namibia. Now, as people who've listened to this before, they'll know that we both love the Uruguayan team and Namibia basically haven't really turned up to this World Cup, sadly. So, I mean, I'd love to see Uruguay have a have a really good performance in here and get a good win. Yeah, yeah, I agreed. Um Uruguay has certainly stolen uh, my heart on uh, in this tournament. Um and they played some good stuff and um look I feel bad for the for Namibia and um, particularly after the what happened um with the sending off of their, their captain and stuff. Um and it really it's a bit of a as as Farrell would call it, a bit of a man test, right? You know, th these guys have got to stand up. They've just had their pants pulled down by ninety six points by the hosts. Um their captain is getting chased out of the country, you know, backs against the wall. Um, if they're going to do it, now's, now's the time to do it. And, and I'd, I'd love to see them put up, put up a big fight and, and maybe nip a win. But I'm going to go for a, a Uruguay win by uh, 10 plus. Oh, that's big. That's big. OK, Thursday night, Japan versus Samoa. Now, this is one of those sort of middle of the road games which could go any which direction and I'm not really sure where it's going to go because neither team have really played well at this World Cup so far yet they've both got good potential so it's a tough one to see I mean I'm going to go with Samoa I think I think they I think they showed some promise towards the end of the game last week against Argentina I think they've got some mm. real top players in there as well um, and I think they might just nick it yeah I think I think it's, this is one that when you look at it uh, is quite interesting for the group. Um, be, because mathematically, I think they're both on five points. If I'm not, and Argentina are on four, right? I think, but Argentina have only played one. 
So my heart wants Japan to win because if Japan wins, they go to nine or 10 points and then they still get to play Argentina and who knows what might happen in that one. So the group would still stay alive. So for my rugby sense tournament kind of head on, I'd, I'd, I'd like Japan to win. Am, am I right in saying that, TT, or are my maths completely balls up? I'm not you sure. You probably don't know what's going on. You're, yeah. No, clue. no you're, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that's right. So, so um, I think Samoa probably have a better pack um, and, and if they can shore up their, their uh, sort of discipline issues from last week, then I, they should have enough firepower. Um, should be a good game, though. But as I said, my, my heart, I want Japan to win so that the group stays fairly lively. Yeah, something I meant to mention in the review of last week's game was Theo McFarlane, the Saracens blindside for Samoa. His handling skills are different gravy. He caught a one-handed kickoff, I think, or a line-out, I can't remember which, in that rain and wind. And it was just like walking around with the ball, you know, like this, like it was attached to a glue mitt a lot of the time. Um, so look out for a lot of that from Theo McFarland again this weekend, yeah. especially he, if it's a little bit drier. He's nearly as good as uh, one of your ex-teammates, Paul Barker, um, a great South African second <laughs> row who, who made a habit of catching line-out balls with one hand and then throwing them down. Huge hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on to Saturday now uh, with the South American derby, Argentina versus Chile. Now, another of our favourite teams there in Chile and Argentina who haven't really got, got, you know, got into stride yet this World Cup. But, I mean, they have to be favourites for this game and I think they might find their... Find their um, on the straps a little bit here and, and win out, run out comfortable winners. Yeah, I don't see it going any other way. I'm, I'm hoping for uh, another great atmosphere. Um, it should be good from, from what you said. Um, the South Americans know how to how to support their teams with, with you know great atmosphere. So yeah, I don't I don't see an upset in that one. I think that will just kick on and um, yeah, I'd agree with with what you're saying there. I think well, maybe twenty points, maybe more twenty five. Yeah, yeah, I think a little bit more than that. But just to back up what you said there, if anybody's anywhere near that game and can get a ticket, I'd, I'd very recommend uh, going in there and enjoying the South American chanting and singing because Chile were just as you know vociferous and full of spirit on Saturday as well. So that would be amazing. Uh, okay, next up, Fiji versus Georgia. What what do you think for this one, mate? Well, uh, <laughs> traditionally, you, you might say, oh. You know, Fiji hasn't had a, a sort of um, moment where they've they've sort of you know dropped the ball in a in a in a wider sense and, and had a had a bad performance. They've been just so good. And um, do they have one of them in them? Maybe um, it, it would open up the group right wide open if they were to slip up. Um, having said all that, I I just don't see it. Um, they've had a week off, um, so hopefully rested after the first two opening weeks. So I would, I would see Fiji winning this by, with a bonus point um, and, you know, getting, getting their points difference up again and going after these guys big time, unfortunately for Georgia. So I think it will be uh, Fiji by sort of 30, 32 plus. Yeah, I think I completely agree. I think Fiji have just got a level of professionalism about them at this world cup, which is surpasses anything they've done before. So, Potential banana skin like this, I don't, I don't see it. Um, again, I agree, Fiji by a decent score with the bonus point. Right, Scotland, Romania, Scotland need, 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 need bonus point against Romania. Is it going to happen? Yes, short sure answer. Um, I don't think... I, 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 Romania don't have much to play for, unfortunately, except pride, um, which is sad, sad to say. Um, but that's the reality of it, where Scotland are... You know, it's there for them. Um, I can imagine what the coaching team are saying uh, in terms of the steps they're taking towards, um, which will be a, like a second round knockout really um, against Ireland in a week, uh, in um, 10 days. So um, I don't, I, I see a big score. Um, not sure what the weather's doing over there, whether it's starting to, to get a bit of changeable and um, that might, might have a, a slightly effect. And what I mean by that is when, when, Ireland played them on the opening weekend. It was a bright, sunny, hot day and there was lots of running rugby. So no doubt they'll be chasing down that score um, to try and 
to try and make sure that the points difference doesn't come in to it at the end, which it could do. Uh, the, the group is so tight. But um, Scotland to win by something beginning with a six. OK. Uh, yeah, I've got Scotland as a big winner there as well. Romania are big and brave and, and strong, but I think Scotland will just pick them off and, and, and score a lot of points. Right. And then we move on to Sunday and the big game, Australia versus Portugal. Is this going to be Eddie Jones's last game in charge? Well, if Portugal win, I think it will be, yeah, um, which is is tearing me a little bit because uh, I'd like, we spoke about it in our last pod, I'd, I'd, I've got a lot of feeling for the Australian players. I, I think, um, you know, they were, they were down in the dumps, obviously, after the game, really fell for them. Uh, and I'd love them to to um, be able to put some pride back in, in the jersey. and uh, But also, um, I wouldn't mind Eddie getting sacked. So, <laughs> um, I'm slightly torn on that one. I think in reality, though, Australia will have too much firepower. And I, I think it will be a, a sort of... Australia will get to something beginning with, with, a, with a four or a five. So, I'm going to say um, by 47 points, an Australian win. Um, and even with that win, maybe I'll get my wish. And Eddie will be... Off to the Japan. <laughs> uh, well, they, I'd like, and to then see. they can suffer. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see, and I think I think Portugal might give them a scare early doors. I think they might maybe get a try, it. an early try. But then I do also think Australia will just there'll be the pride in the shirt, there'll be the passion for the jersey, and the country. And I think they'll come together. They'll find a way, and they should be too strong for Portugal. So I see them winning as well. Um, OK, South Africa, Tonga. South Africa coming off the back of a defeat, albeit a close one, against Tonga, who were improving in the last round, but still probably not where you know we maybe anticipated they might be. How do you see this one going? Yeah, they've been slightly disappointing, haven't they? Um, maybe that's because our ex- expectations were too much with the with the sort of players coming back with the with the new sort of um, origin rule. Um you know, SA will be hurting, I think, a bit. Um, uh, there'll be a couple of individuals that will be hurting and want to go out there. It'll be interesting to see what he does with selection um, on this one. But uh, uh, Tonga might find themselves in front of a bit of a angry um, Springbok and um, Springbok side. And I, I, I see South Africa winning this very well, um, probably by 50, 50 or 60 points, unfortunately, um, as much as I would love Tonga to win and Scotland and Ireland to go through. But um, I think that would that, that could mean we could have a nice little draw, I think, at the end. Scotland and Ireland, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, <laughs> wishful thinking, I think. What about what about selection? Do you see them picking Andre Pollard this week? Well, Razzie said he wasn't fit last week, so um when else? Yeah, maybe off the bench, but then that's a risk. Um psychologically then what does that do to their ten? If you do drop them, because it wasn't his it wasn't his fault that they lost. Okay, they missed some kicks, but he still played bloody well um, at 10. So um, Razzie will do Razzie things. Maybe he'll pick um, Faf at 10. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but yeah, Pollard probably probably needs to come on maybe in the second half and, and um, slot some kicks. Um, but why will, they, why will they be going for kicks? They, they should be kicking to the corner and going for bonus points. So it's a weird one. I'm not sure. What do you think yeah, on I that one? Think, yeah, I think, well, I just think in the bigger picture of the whole, World Cup campaign, Pollard needs to get some game time. So if they're not going to do it this week, if he's assuming he's fit, of course, which I believe he is now, then where are they going to do it? You know, they don't want him coming yeah, in or it's less ideal for him to come in without having played at all sort of later in the tournament. So I see them. Yeah, I think he might start and it, it's not being dropped for um, Manny Libuk. It's it's for the greater good of the whole squad. So um, yeah, I, I think he'll start and I think South Africa will be amped. I think they're going to go up like they do almost every game, to be fair. And I think they will tear Tonga apart by the end. Yeah, I think it could be a big score. Yeah, I, 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 feel, I do fear for the, for the Tongans. Um, I think South Africa will be playing zombie in the change room. <laughs> Just to get them going. Right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then, people at home, what do you think? Uh, do you agree, disagree with what we've said today? What teams do you think we're going to make it through? Uh, let's hear it in the comments down below and give us a thumbs up while you're down there. Uh, and a reminder that I'm out here in France for this entire World Cup doing daily vlogs. So hit subscribe as well so you uh, you don't miss out on those. And if you don't see me, come up and say hello and uh, maybe you'll get into one of the vlogs. Um, so Elko, this leaves me to say thank you very much. 
Thanks, CT. Enjoy the, the weekend. Hope you get to see a few games. Thanks, mate. And to those at home, get out and play.